Good morning, guys. Thank you so much for coming to my presentation today. I know these Saturday sessions are tough. You're going to get a little bit of my last day of FinCon voice here, because um, I know we've all been talking, listening, and enjoying our time here. But really, I'm excited to share with you guys my story about how I took thecollegeinvestor.com into a six-figure blog over the last few years, really with a lot of strategies I've learned here at FinCon and some strategies I've thought through myself. So I actually started The College Investor in 2009, so it's been around for seven years. And uh, when I first started blogging, I really had no idea what I was doing. Uh, I made no money the first two years, like nothing. I just put content out into the world, crossed my fingers, people would read it, and maybe my mom did. So, you know, after going to my first FinCon um, in 2012, or actually 2013 there, I realized that I wasn't doing a lot of things that I should have been doing when it came to monetizing my site. You see all these other bloggers here that are doing really well, and you're like, how can I be like them too? How do I earn six figures on my blog? So I really decided that I need to take a look at what I've been doing and change a few things up. And so you can see here on the chart, guys, after my couple years at FinCon, I was able to take my blog from 24,000 and double it, double it, double it, and we're on track this year to be a six-figure blog. And I'm just talking about blog revenue, guys. So when we talk about blogging, I know a lot of people use this to springboard into freelancing, consulting, and other stuff. Like, this is just income from content on a website. Okay, we're not talking about writing for others or doing that kind of stuff. All right? So my focus areas for it were two things, strategy and content. When you're talking about your blog, you have to have a strategy. Monetization strategy is huge. And it's all about your goals, because all of us are different people. And we all have our own things that we're OK with doing and not OK with doing. We all have companies that we like working with and companies we don't like working with. And you have to define what that means for yourself. If you're a financial advisor, a financial planner, maybe that strategy is just lead generation into your wealth management firm. If you're like me, I consider myself more like a magazine. Right, I have a lot of different types of content. I share a lot of different things. So I'm OK monetizing with display ads, with sponsored content, and different things that you typically see in a magazine. You know, Maybe you have a product or a service that you're selling. So maybe the purpose of your blog is to really focus on those areas. But whatever it is, you need to decide what your goal is with your monetization strategy. And that's going to define how you create content and what programs and services you're going to be OK selling. The next thing is understanding the simple, content, or simple ways to monetize. And we're going to talk a lot about that later in the session today. Right? There's a couple big buckets. A lot of you guys know them. Affiliates, display advertising, sponsored content. There's really probably hundreds of ways to monetize your site. There's a lot of ways that you can do it on a smaller scale. Um, but we're going to talk about these big buckets. And you guys can understand the strategies that I've taken to monetize my site. And hopefully, you can apply some of those to your site. And finally, the goal with any advertising on all of our sites is to create what I call win-win-win scenarios. We're going to dive into this a little more as we get to different parts and different ways to monetize. But it has to be a win for your readers, right? If you put something on your site and it's not resonating with them, you're not going to make money and you might alienate people in the process, right? The second thing, it has to be a win for you. It has to stand for your brand. So you have to be OK with the company. There's companies here at FinCon that pitch me all the time. But if I don't like the way that service reflects, I don't want to advertise them on my site. And finally, it has to be a win for the company that you're working with, or else they're not going to pay you. It's as simple as that. So let's talk about content, because this is where a lot of us miss the mark when it comes to making money on our sites. right? One of my main things here is that every piece of content on your site should have a how. We as bloggers get really philosophical sometimes. We like to share whether the debt snowball or the debt avalanche is the best way to pay off debt. We like to share our thoughts on why you should invest in the S&P 500. But at the same time, 90% of your readers are probably coming to your site because they're looking for a shortcut on how to get something. So they might be looking at debt snowball or debt avalanche, but their real search is, how do I pay off debt the quickest? And are you solving that problem, or are you giving them more news that they already know about? And so the trick is, is to have the how. So this is an example from a blogger in our community. And this is an article that is about thrifty Halloween costumes. And I chose this, Halloween's coming up. And this article will probably get 100,000 visitors to it in the next month, because people on Pinterest are going to start talking about, how do I dress up for Halloween, right? And that's an awesome outfit, right? There is like, I want that bag with the money sign. I want to be a robber. But if I'm lazy, which I am, 
I just want to click a button to Amazon and buy that and have it sent to my house. So this is an awesome example of an article where you literally could put an Amazon link right there, and I guarantee you that you would start seeing lots of revenue, especially for this article coming up in the next 30 days. But all of us have this on our site. We miss that how on how to get the user to do it, because they are looking for those shortcuts. Here's a good example of an article that answers the how. This is another blogger in our community that talks a lot about how to make money blogging, right? And she has this disclaimer on her site that says, like, if you want to start making money blogging, here's a course that I sell. And at the same time, it says, here's a Bluehost link. Now, whether or not you agree with selling people on Bluehost or creating a course, her readers resonate with that. And this is a place that she clearly answers the how they can do what she does, right? And that generates lots of revenue for her. The second thing is, is if you're like me, you've been blogging for a really long time. I've been doing this seven years. I really started learning, you guys saw the graph, in 2012, 2013, 2014, how to make money. But what about all this stuff in the past? You have to go back through your archives, and you have to start updating that content. So a lot of you guys might be familiar with Todd Tresseter. He talked about the content audit. He did a speech on it last year at FinCon. He's probably been on about half a dozen con uh, podcasts over the last year talking about the content audit. Well, I want to challenge you to not only do the content audit, but to do the content audit with your monetization strategy in mind. Okay? Because when I started blogging, personal capital didn't exist. Right? So if I was talking about budgeting in 2011 or 2012, what was I even telling people to do? I don't know. I better go find out. And those are perfect examples of ways that you can quickly add revenue to your site. But it can get challenging, right? So I have over 1,000 articles on my site. A lot of you guys have hundreds of articles on your site. So where to get started? So I want to share this with you guys really quick. First off, if you go to thecollegeinvestor.com slash fincon16, this is there, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. But this is a Google Analytics tracking plugin called Monster Insights. Right? And what it does is it adds two things to your analytics that allow you to track outbound clicks on your site. So as you're going through your content, just start with the top 10 things. See where your readers are actually reading. And what I found with conversations here in the blogger community is that you know, as much as we want to tell our readers what's important, over time, Google ranks other articles much more important and sends traffic to things that you might not have considered to be your best articles or your most important articles. But the fact is, people are finding your stuff through Google. And you need to decide how to monetize that stuff. So this is the perfect way to start, because we have a lot of stuff on there in our sites. The second thing is, is low-hanging fruit. So the second one, the top outbound clicks on your site, where are your readers already clicking? So I actually helped a blogger just yesterday where they did a book review on Amazon and they did not use an Amazon tracking link. And this, people were clicking 10 times a day to this book on Amazon and they literally did not make any money on it for a year. So where are your readers going? And when I did this on my site two years ago, I learned that I had about five opportunities in my top 10 to turn those regular links into an affiliate link. It's crazy. And plus, we don't even think that some of these places have an affiliate program. And that's where you have to ask around. So let's jump right into it. Let's talk about affiliate marketing. This is probably the most popular thing to make money online right now. So what is it? it is the, when you sell someone else's product on your site, the goal of it is to create that win-win-win situation. The win is the reader has to have the shortcut to success. Right? And then the company has to have the incentive to pay you, and it aligns with the values and you support it. Because if you're not having content you support, you're going to fail. The best affiliate posts are typically the ones where you take the reader through your story. I've seen two in the last couple of weeks that have done really well, and those are people that went and did Uber, right? So this is where the blogger got in, signed up for Uber, started driving for Uber, shared their stories, yada, yada, yada. And then those posts convert really well, and Uber pays them to send referrals their way. I've also seen one where it's peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, and people go through their whole process of signing up for the program and sharing it. So it's a review, but it's your own personal story and your own personal insights on how the process works. Because if the readers like you, they're going to like them, you to take them through your story. right? So how do you find affiliate partners? There are a lot of ways to find affiliates. So the first one is to join an affiliate network. 
There are hundreds. These are the most common ones right here, and I have these linked on that article at thecollegeinvestor.com slash FinCon16, so you don't even have to worry about it. They're all linked. But these have 60% of the, probably the brands that you want to work with are on these. The other 40% either have their own programs or they have to work directly with them, or what a lot of people forget is their referral programs. For example, Digit, TaskRabbit, you have to be a member of those and then you get paid for people that sign up with your referral link. So there's still ways to get paid there. So once you sign up for these programs, then you have an option to choose the different partners you want to work with. And you can see what they pay. This is important because you have to see if you want to spend the time on it. You know, if there's a bigger ROI for the company, they're going to pay you more. And if there's less, they're going to pay you less. But what I think a lot of people forget is that these are negotiable. Okay. If you can deliver a lot of good traffic and leads to these companies, they will pay you more. So I think we've heard of the Bluehost example, and a lot of people are familiar with it. I think they start something like $50 a lead. Okay? But I can tell you that it goes up a lot more than that. The top people that you see earning money from Bluehost are probably getting four to five times that for every sign-up that they're getting and sending their way. Okay? So realize that as you're able to generate more traffic and leads, you're going to get paid a lot more than whatever these base rates are that they're trying to quote you on. Second thing is, is how else do you find them? Okay, because like I said, there's these, there are these affiliate networks. But the big thing is, is can you meet them here? Because some of these guys are a little strict. They might not know you. They might say, I don't know if I want you in my network. Go meet them. Use the app. Get out there and network with these brands and share your site with them. If you're not here, Google them. Seriously. You can Google if they have an affiliate program or referral program. Because a lot of them, they call them a referral program and not an affiliate program. And you have to sell your site as a partner. You need a media kit and you need a one pager. And on my site, on that FinCon 16 link, I share my media kit so you can download it and honestly just use it as an example for your own so you can copy and see what I'm doing. Let me show you two examples of how you can leverage affiliate partnerships on your site. So that first one right there is an article I wrote maybe four or five years ago when I was looking for a cloud accounting software, right? We all need to keep track of our income and expenses. Should I use QuickBooks, Zero, all these different things. There was not a lot out there. Everyone did their own reviews of just one, but nobody compared them. Nobody was telling me, yeah, I pay $39.99 for QuickBooks. I pay like $9.99 for FreshBooks. This one's free, but what do I get at every single level? So honestly, all I did was combine my reviews and put it together on a nice, easy chart, said what you get for every single one. And this article, even though it was only getting 100 visitors a day, maybe on the best days ever, was earning me two to $3,000 a month in affiliate sales. Because all those companies pay. And it's funny because I wasn't recommending one or the other because honestly, they're all pretty good, right? And they all match different situations for you. So like maybe you do need that QuickBooks. Maybe you want FreshBooks for the invoicing. Maybe you want Wave because it's free in your small time and you don't really need it. But they all pay, and they're all good. So they all align, and that creates a win-win-win situation. The other example here is one I have for um, investors that are looking to get started with a low amount of money, right? So I talk to college students and young adults. They're not investing $50,000. They want ways to invest with $1,000 or $2,000. And so I give an example here of getting started in real estate with just $1,000, $2,000. And these are two real estate crowdfunding companies. One of them was here at FinCon, Realty Shares. Fundrise is the other. And they pay for people to sign up on their site and fund it. And this is just inside an article where I link to it. So nothing fancy, no charts, no images. But those links right there generate me probably about $500 every single month on just this one article. Cool. Sponsored content. So a lot of you guys have heard of sponsored content. This is where brands want to post and advertise on your site. Now, sponsored content is one of those things that I think has gotten a bad rap over the last couple of years. And on the same time, we get a lot of these things that are like, let me guest post on your site, and I will just a link back, yada, yada, yada. Like, that's not what I'm talking about here. So in your, guys got your, everyone got their FinCon bag? So in that bag, there's Money Magazine. And in the middle of that Money Magazine, there is a sponsored content article that is five pages long. And I guarantee you that you would not even be able to tell it's a sponsored article. It is so well integrated into the magazine that it just looks like native content. 
And when I'm talking about sponsored content, that's what I want you guys to do on your sites. Yes, you need to disclose it, and they do, but it is like, it fits the theme. It's branded, all right? And they are trying to advertise. And so, really, when it comes to sponsored content, there's two reasons why companies want to work on your sites, okay? The first one is the SEO value. And this gets murky, because this is where it's not necessarily about the links. So you have to realize that these companies want to be on your sites because they can also change the results in Google around their brand name. So it's not about linking to that website to boost their website. It could also be about changing what it comes up when they search for a keyword term. Because if they get 10 bloggers to write about their company, suddenly it's their company, and then these articles are below it. And maybe it makes a bad Yelp review go away. So they're trying to manipulate those a little bit, but it's in a positive way because if you have that win-win-win situation and you believe in this company, like you can help them change those up. Um, the second thing is just straight advertising. It is just having an awareness of a campaign. And they will pay good money to get their campaigns out there. I mean, for us to make $1,000, I mean, that is not even a rounding error on Capital One's balance sheet. Right? So realize that, that they are out there, they're spending millions and millions and millions of dollars advertising, and they do want to work with bloggers, and they do want to work online. So you have the ability to get those campaigns out there. They also like to do it for social amplification. You don't just have to do a blog post. A lot of these campaigns now are looking at video. They're looking at Facebook shares, tweets. I actually saw a brand take over someone's Facebook Live account two weeks ago, and they just wanted to have someone talking about them on Facebook Live for live video. So as these sponsored opportunities evolve, it's a great potential money-making or idea for your site. So how do you get these sponsorships, right? They're magical. Companies just want to shower money on us. You need to say that you're willing to work with them. I cannot believe how many blogs do not have an advertised link on their site. Just say, I am willing to take advertisements and have a little basics about your site with a contact form, and you will suddenly start to see advertisers come your way. The second thing is, is having that media kit and connecting with those advertisers. Because a lot of people don't realize, but you can actually pitch these brands as well. You can send it to them, but you need to know who to send it to. And those people you send it to are here at FinCon. And if they're not here at FinCon, same thing. You can Google them. You can find them on LinkedIn. You're typically looking for their PR, or their media relations, um, or their marketing firm or marketing outlets. And if you have an idea of a way that you can create a win-win-win situation, you can get a brand to sponsor whatever you're working on, whether it's a blog post or a blog campaign, because blogs like that, so, or brands like that. So you guys seen it, like, um, you know, there's a couple of them this year, like big roundups where like 10, 50, or maybe even more, 50 bloggers write about life insurance, or 50 bloggers write about the, you know, starting their IRAs. You know, how do you think those people that founded that got the sponsorships? They said, hey, I'm going to have 50 blogs talking about this. It's going to be great exposure for you. This is a great thing for you to sponsor, and that's how they're getting those sponsorships. And they try to create that win, win, win situation. Because those are great topics to talk about, and the brands get exposure from that as well. So sponsored content really is not a bad thing, but you have to be open to it, and you sometimes have to seek it out. I would tell you from my firsthand experience, if you're going to pitch a brand on sponsored content, you're going to get shot down 90% of the time. But that 10% of the time you get it, they're typically going to pay you very well for that sponsorship. Next up, create your own product. So when we talk about creating our products on our sites, sometimes we get really discouraged because we think there's going to be a lot of time involved. And you think of these big courses or a lot of finance bloggers over the last year have written books and launched these big full-scale books with tours and everything. And I don't think that's the only way to create a product, and I know for a fact there's a lot of revenue with creating both micro products and mega products. So micro products are eBooks, downloadables, and short video tutorials that you can sell for maybe under twenty dollars. Okay, I think eBooks are going away. Yeah, that's my eBook, and I sell it on Amazon. And it makes me like twenty bucks a month. It used to make a lot more, but eBooks people don't read. I was listening to a blogger today talk about the statistics that males from sixteen to thirty do not buy books ever anymore. So, like, it's just they don't read. They will not buy your book. But what will they do? They'll watch a video. Maybe they'll take a downloadable. I think a lot of us in this room need to learn a little bit from the mom blogs out there. Mom blogs have been, like, selling printables and all this stuff online for years. And we have that opportunity as well. You can make a budgeting spreadsheet. Sell it for $2.99. Like, this is my budgeting tool. And you can link to that on different sites. 
You know, I create video tutorials now on how to fill out government forms in the student loan debt space because the forms are confusing as hell and a lot of people scam people out of doing it. So there are definitely opportunities there to create micro products that you can sell for a low price point. The cool thing is, is these products will typically only take you 20 to 30 minutes to make. Uh, and you can just put those on Gumroad, drag and drop, and you can have it on your site in like an hour. Um, so even if it doesn't sell, you have a quick investment on something that it does have the potential to earn you money. Then of course, we have the mega products, right? You can always create that course, the ebook or the full books. You can make a membership site and stuff. The trouble with these is they have a lot of upside potential. This is like risk and reward 101 from the stock market. A lot of upside potential, right? But they take a huge time investment, potentially a money investment. You want to advertise and to launch these things the right way. So don't dismiss them. There's some great tools for it. But you know, if you're looking on making the big upside and you're willing to put in the work, those mega products could do it for you. So creating your own product. Don't dismiss it and find those gaps that you can fill it in. Display. So display is another one that kind of gets a bad rap because people say they don't like to have ads on their site. But I would challenge you, especially unless you are going to be a lead generation site for a financial planning firm, display is huge. Okay? There are becoming more and more options in display. And yes, the values of display are going down. But if you get good traffic and you can't figure out a way to plug an affiliate in there or it's not a sponsored article or you can't get your own product in there, this is a great way to monetize it. Because the fact is, I still have articles on my site that are like news articles. Like they don't really serve a purpose. Uh, but I wrote them, they get good traffic. So how else am I going to make money on them? And it's putting those display ads on the site. So this old school banner ad is still a very positive solution. And on the flip side, a lot of people still know what to expect with these. Like, it's not uncommon for people to go to a website and see the banner ads. So I don't think you're minimizing the user experience by having them. The important thing to realize, though, is how display advertising works. So you hear CPM a lot, and that's the cost per 1,000 page views. The thing with CPM, though, is that you're typically limited on the number of impressions. So in our finance space, like the big brands like Fidelity and Capital One, they'll pay you $50 CPMs. But you're only going to see that for a few days, and then you go back down to AdSense that's at like 20 cents a CPM. And so you really get hosed on that. The thing that you really need to think about is what's called RPM. And that's the revenue per page. So in this example right here, I have five ads that have a dollar CPM. So that revenue on that page is $5. You have to strike the balance. Because you could just keep jamming. Oh, that sounds great. Let me add 10 units. Let me add 20 units. The thing with that is now competition makes that CPM value go down to nothing. So the sweet spot is between three and seven ads on your page. If you do short content, stick closer to three. If you're doing 2,000, 3,000 word blog posts where those ads get spaced out, you don't even see, you know, see the second one, you could probably go closer to seven. But after seven, you're actually going to keep losing money on that page by adding more ads to it. And remember, guys, there's a lot of different ad types out there now. So you could do mobile ads, video ads. You could put ads that like lay over the image on the bottom of it. You can have pop-ups and more. Once again, I don't advocate all of these. They are options for you, but see how they align with your brand. Because I think we all hate pop-ups in general. So. So, but how do you boost it, right? So we all might have AdSense on there. That's great. But AdSense, if you're getting more than twenty or 30,000 visitors to your site every single month, you're going to be losing money by staying with AdSense. The reason is, is AdSense is just one provider. Media.net is just one provider. The best way to boost your revenue is to get competition for your display advertising revenue. And you can do that by switching to an ad network. The two big ones are Monumetric and uh, AdThrive. And what they do from the graph, you can see it, is they just get the advertisers to compete for you, and they show the highest bidder on your site, and they do it in real time. So the current world price for a CPM right now is 23 cents. In America, it's about 50 cents. So if you're on AdSense, you're probably hovering around 50 to 70 cents. On these providers, their current average is $1.40 to $1.60 right now. And so simple switching, you're already tripling your revenue. So really consider if you're getting anything over 20 or 30,000 page views, you should be doing display through a third-party provider. Cool. 
there's a lot of other income streams out there. It's just amazing. It's countless. Um, you could sell retargeting cookies for your audience. You could sell access to your social sites if you have a YouTube channel or a Facebook Live channel. You can sell access to your email list. You could sell your email list. Once again, I'm not saying that you have to or that aligns with your brand, but it's possible. Uh, you could sell your content for syndication. You know, some of these big sites out there are always looking for content. You could set up an agreement where they pay you to help have your content on a big site. You could sell private label rights to your content. I mean, someone can brand it as their own. You can create a product like a calculator and have it on other site for money. So just remember, there are lots and lots of ways to make money with your site. Uh, but you have to decide what's win, win, win for you and your brand. And remember, too, that you don't actually have to do any of these. If you're going to use your site for lead generation, focus on that. If you're going to just be a freelancer, you just use that as to get freelance gigs. So probably ads and display ads don't make sense. Um, if you want to be a consultant, same thing. So really keep that in mind. So as we leave here today, I'm going to spend lots of time with questions. That I think that's going to be the most value added. But I want you to leave here with this action plan right now. And the action plan is you've got to do that content audit that monetizes your site. So focus on the how your readers are going to get action for you. You need to have that click tracking. You need to know where your readers are going so that you can ensure that you're monetizing appropriately. You need to join those affiliate networks and create that affiliate content. And you need to go back through your archives and make sure that those affiliates are in there because those are going to be getting more traffic than your new articles for the most part. You can develop that sponsored content partnerships. Make sure you have that advertise tab on your page. Create that media kit and have that available for your advertisers. You need to improve your display advertising revenue. Consider joining an ad network. Uh, I highly recommend it. And then you can't forget to repeat the content audit every six months because your content is going to continue to change. Advertisers come and go. We love fintech companies in this community, but sadly, probably half of them are going to disappear in a year. But then another 50 are going to sprout up, and they might have a great product or service. So as the market continues to evolve, you have to continue to audit your content and see where you can continue to make revenue on your past content. So my site right there, collegeinvestor.com, FinCon16, you can download all of this. Uh, it's all there for you so that you don't have to memorize all that. Thanks, guys, and I'd love to spend some time doing questions.